اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین محمد معالح تیبین الطاہرین و اصحابہ الغر المیامین الحمد للہ اللذی جعلنا من المتمسکین بولائی سید و مولای علی ابن ابی طالب اللہم صل علی محمد و علی محمد و عجل فجر السلام علیکم و ملکم تو فیچر ستارز لائب ان ادائی ٹی وی ایم یو حسن سن شاہ ان تیدی ویر گر بی توکی باو ا کپل اف اسپیکس دا ار پروفیت ہز توٹرز تو ستی اوی فرم Um, arrogance, pride and cheating and we're going to be linking it into what is um, a big uh, event that is going on for, um, the, uh, for the past week and <coughs> just before I continue I'd like to introduce our guest Assalamu alaikum, my name is Ms. Bell Assalamu alaikum, my name is Mohsin Thank you for the introduction and what is this event that I'm talking about? What is this event that's uh, what was happened? The what? The Mil Milad and yeah. Rabi. Yeah, so the what? The celebration of the what? The birthday of the Prophet. Birthday of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And this is a really important week. Why? Why do you think it's an important week? Because... Uh, the yeah, because it was obviously the birth of the Holy Prophet, the person who brought us, yeah, who delivered to us Islam. Why else would it be important? Because he taught us many things to stay away from and to do for the sake of Allah. Yeah, that's another important reason. Yeah, kind of link it into what Moses said as well. But there's one key thing that I'm looking for, yeah. Every single Muslim in the whole world, yeah, wherever, whatever type of Muslim you are, whether you be um, one type of Muslim who, um, who maybe uh, struggles with praying, yeah, whether you're a, a type of Muslim who you pray five times a day, you struggle with something else, yeah, or whether you be from different um, sex, yeah, from different what? Genders. No, no, no. Let's see. It's probably the way I'm um, saying it because I, 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 I do say a lot of words wrong. Yeah. The um, parts of what the religion, different schools of thought. Yeah. Whatever different, what? Types. Yeah. T whatever type of Muslim you are, basically. What is in common? What is. What, is, what do we all, whatever Muslim that you take, yeah, what is, all, what is the similarity that you can't, you can't take away from anyone? The one thing that everyone has in common if you're Muslim? Quran. Quran, yeah. Allah. Allah, obviously. <laughs> Who else? Who is his personality? Prophet. Prophet. The Holy Prophet. Yeah. The final message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yeah The person who brought us this religion Every single Muslim From um, whatever uh, school of thought um, you are They follow this person Yeah They hold him to be really of a high regard Yeah And today in the, in the, modern, in the modern world Muslims have this problem they have this big problem and what is this big problem do you have any idea any of you have any thoughts of what might be what are the biggest problems as a whole as uh, muslims as a whole what's a really big problem uh, begins with a u unity yeah unity yeah and um you um the um, Imam Khomeini, yeah, a person who do, do you any do you any of you know anything about him? No. He's the one who started that uh, revolution in Iran, yeah. and was uh, the main um, 
the main um, protagonist, the, um, the catalyst that brought that, um, um, that revolution, that brought that revolution forward and helped that revolution establish. Yeah, he actually talked about this. Yeah, and saying that this week, because there are different dates in which um, it, um, whether whatever Muslim you are, yeah, the, your different school of thoughts. Yeah, there are different dates for um, the birth birth of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah, and these dates, the in between of these dates, from that start of that first date to that end date, yeah. yeah. The um, um, he actually said this was a what a week of unity, yeah, where we can all come under this um, uh, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, yeah, and understand that he what did he want what did he want for all of us? Did he want this all this all this infighting and all this um, hate between one another? Did he want that? No. Yeah. He didn't want that. He wanted us to be together. Yeah. And if because if we are split, what happens? Then other outside forces can what? Make us fight against each other, make us break up and make um us together um together weaker. Yeah. So this is why the Holy Prophet wanted us to come under and be uh, as a unity. We can have our different thoughts, but the main thing that we are all Muslim, and we all believe that we're all Muslim. Yeah. And just because it is the Prophet's birthday and we're talking about this and how he really wanted this unity, there's a couple of um, hadith that, um, from the Imam, uh, from Imam Ali alayhi salam and from the Holy Prophet. I would like to just mention as well Here. One from Imam Ali alayhi salam Where he says Stay with the great majority For verily Allah's hand is with a larger group Beware of separation For verily it is It is the deviant among you Is the victim, um, victim of shaitan Just as the deviant among the cattle Is the victim of the wolf Yeah, so, uh, That is one hadith from the um, uh, from Imam uh, Ali alayhi salam Another one um, not, uh, From the Holy Prophet No sooner does a community differ Amongst themselves after their, after their own Prophet Then the people of falsehood From among um, them Become victorious over the people of truth So he's talking about um, This This community How they differ amongst each other yeah, and how they split apart. Yeah, they are the people of what falsehood. Yeah, we shouldn't have this uh, big split. Yeah, um, we'll go for another one for uh, from Imam Ali alayhi salam. <coughs> Verily, you are brothers in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Nothing has separated you except ill natures and bad consciences. Consequently, you do not bear the burdens of each other, nor do you advise each other, nor spend on each other, nor love each other. Now, this is a really important one as well. Yeah, talking about our responsibilities towards each other as well. Yeah, and if we had this unity, yeah, we c we are able to fulfill these responsibilities, making us stronger and to stop what persecution. Yeah. Uh, let's check if I have any more This is one from um, Imam Jafar Sadiq This is um, uh, quite uh, a big one So hopefully you are able to, able to understand this one Some of the people narrated from, uh, from the Holy Prophet So um, this is what um, Imam um, Jafar al-Sadiq is talking about that verily some people narrated from the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said the separation of my um, of my community is a mercy and they were truthful so I ask that if uh, their separation is a mercy um, then it is their uh, uh, congregation a chastisement to which the Imam replied 
it is not as you understand it is not as they understood it actually he meant the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but why then not there go forth a group from each of their sections so he commanded them to go forth to the holy uh, to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa and to uh, frequent him and learn him then to return to their people and teach them so what he meant is a physical separation from their cities not a, uh, not a separation or difference with regard of the religion of Allah for verily the religion of Allah is one yeah so um it's talking about how um how someone brought to uh, Imam Jafar Sadiq this thing about the Holy Prophet saying that the separation of my community is a, a mercy. So someone there trying to um, say that uh, we're separate and that's, and that's a mercy. But then that what the Imam would say, we would respond back to him that he's talking about a physical separation from teaching the religion of Islam, going to the different cities, separating in that way. Yeah? And then he talks about that the, the religion of Allah is what? One. Yeah? And how we all have to come under this religion. Yeah? This one. And we're all what? A community. And these are all hadiths that talk about this ha having this unity. So this is why I thought it would be really important to bring up unity in um in in today's show because we, um it's re it was re it's close um uh, we've just passed the birth of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa yeah uh, last uh, last week so it's just um, an important thing to bring apart and another thing is that the holy prophet told us to what he came for to what fix our ah uh, akhlaq. akhlaq yeah and today, this is what I think that we're going to get into, mainly akhlaq. Hopefully we can get through everything. We'll probably only um, finish talking about arrogance. But hopefully, um, I want to really do get on to cheating. So, um, we, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But first, Mr. you got the first thing. So, we can start, Mr. Prophet Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. What is arrogance? It shall be said, enter the gates of how to abide therein, so evil is the abode of the proud. In Islam, self-centered boasting or arrogance is considered to be very bad. In fact, even pride in oneself is discouraged because it can lead to arrogance. Here are the words of Allah in the Quran regarding arrogance. Do not turn your face away from the people in arrogance and do not walk with pride on the earth. Truly, Allah does not love any self-centered boaster. Be moderate and keep your voice low. Truly, the most hateful of the voices is, brain of, is the brain of the donkey. Thus does Allah set a seal on the heat of every proud haughty one. Arrogance is when we think of ourselves very highly. We feel that we are superior just because we may be good in one or more areas. We can be arrogant about our wealth, our health, our strength, our friends, our talents, our work, our accomplishments, our colour, our race, and the list goes on. We can even be arrogant of, few, of good things such as our knowledge, our good deeds, and our prayers. But even arrogance of these things is not good. Here is an example of a person who boasted of his knowledge. Hasnain was a 13-year-old boy who always, who always got A's in all his courses. He felt he was the best in his class. He could tell you how many people had landed on the moon, who were the first five pres presidents of the United States of America, who, how many countries there were in Europe and how fast the fastest plane could go. He was good in Madrasa too. He could tell you all the animals mentioned in the Quran, all the known prophets whose name began with a D and the exact locations where each Imam died. Heck, he knew so much he could even tell you how tall the average giraffe was. What, bo what bothered his friends was not that he knew so much, it was that he showed off too much. He would go around boasting to everyone about how much he knew. His friends soon started hating him, but he didn't care. He saw them as inferior anyway. He soon started avoiding them himself because he knew he was better than them. Of course I'm better, he said. Who else knows how to come count backwards from one million? Salah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajum When we talk about Allah and his and what he teaches us yeah why do you think it's best to listen to Allah when he's teaching us why do you think it's important to listen to him because what he's saying is the truth and it's um 
the best thing that you should do and if you weren't to listen to him you would do all these bad deeds and like cause chaos yeah that's one thing that he ne he never tells a lie yeah one of his attributes is that he doesn't tell lies yeah he's truthful yeah so um this is one reason why we should listen to him anything else any other reason yeah because uh it when we listen to him, it, it helps us because, let's say uh, you're ill and then you go to your doctor. Your doctor tells you what you what you need to, to make yourself recover from this sickness. Mm. Same same in that it's same in that concept. Allah helps you. It's, it's Allah helps you when you when you when you you are in need. Yeah. So, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He's what? He's the person who created us. Yeah. He's the person who is made us and established us in this world so it's only best that he uh, or it's only that he knows what's best for us yeah and when he's talking about this arrogance yeah well, and uh, what Mr. story when he's told us to stay away from ag arrogance yeah and there's um there is another um hadith from the holy prophet yeah where he says um shall i inform you of the worst of allah's servants it is the rude and arrogant person yeah so here Allah is warning us about arrogance yeah and from that sh um, from that little scenario that Mr. gave that story yeah what happened because he had this arrogance what happened to him he showed off too much and then his friends didn't like him yeah his friends didn't like him he showed off too much too much yeah his friends did a um um, didn't want to hang around with anymore. He became a person who was disliked. Yeah, no one, um, um, no one would want to, ha um, no one want to help him. No one want to talk to him or anything just because of this arrogance. Yeah. So Allah, when He's t uh, telling us what to do and what not to do, because He knows what's best for us. He's the person who's created us. Yeah. We can, um, some, t uh, we can see. The logic in what he's saying as well also Yeah Because he knows the best for us If he wasn't arrogant he wouldn't be um, In this uh, situation where his friends will help him No one will help him with anything Yeah Yeah So this is just an example of Where um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something And we are able to see the logic behind it Yeah Because he's the person who created us And he's obviously supposed to know he would know and he tells us this this stuff to what make us better yeah yeah so Muslim, you got the next thing so we start Muslim of the last salawat Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad arrogance or excessive excessive pride makes a person think that every, everyone else is lower than him and that he is better than everyone else when this happens, if anyone gives him advice, he does not listen to them because he thinks that they don't know as much as he does. Also, if anybody needs his help, he may not help that person because he may think that he is too superior to help an inferior person. Arrogance prevents a person from correcting any of his mistakes. He thinks that he is too good to make mistakes. He also thinks that others are too inferior to give him any advice, so in the end he will continue making, if, making mistakes. Arrogance can make a person forget about Allah. An arrogant person will forget that Allah was one who gave him everything in the first place. A person, a person who is proud of himself attributes all his success to his known self and not to Allah. Further consequences of arrogance: one, people will start hating us if we are arrogant. In Najah Balagha, Imam Ali salam says, "Don't be proud, otherwise a number of people who." you hate will increase this of course is true as no one likes a person who boasts a lot two allah will stop sending his blessings on us if we are arrogant in the quran allah says i shall turn away from uh, i will turn away from my signs with those who act with my arrogance on the earth three we will not be able to enter paradise prophet muhammad says one who has even a particle of arrogance in his heart shall not enter paradise. What is the cure to prevent us from being arrogant? Fortunately, there are cures to solve this problem, but it is up to us to make sure that we follow them. As long as we take the first step, Allah will help us the rest of the way.
one the first thing we should do is to realize that many things that we are proud of will not last forever our wealth will will be given away our poverty can be dis our property can be destroyed in a flood or storm our precious things can get stolen any day all of these temporary things that once we are temporary things once we realize that we will all understand that we are re that we can't really be proud of ourselves just because we have them to the second thing to do is to realize that we have that we ourselves are very insignificant one bite from a little mosquito and we feel pain we have to realize that our health and our strength will get worse as we get older and one day we will cease to exist three another thing we can do is think about us we should realize that everything we have is from allah and so we have a duty to share with others just one day we can do this by giving money to the poor however we should not be we should be careful not to be proud of this action either for the most important thing we can do is to remember Allah we should try following everything he wants us to do that way we can realize that he is the greatest of all and we are all his creatures we should we should be humble in everything that Allah asks us or that everything Allah says in the Quran Salawat ala huma sali ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajifaju. Thank you, Mosin. Mosin, there went through a lot of information there. Yeah. And we're going to just a little bit um, talk, try to cover that again. And then we'll see if we can finish arrogance if we have enough time left. So, Mosin, they started off. What was he talking about when he started off? Um, he was talking about. Um uh, like the effects of um, arrogance. being arrogant. Yeah, so he t uh, we talked about how um, through this scenario, uh, how he lost his friends and how now no one would help him just because he's what arrogant. Yeah, another thing when you become arrogant, your mindset changes. Your mindset changes, um, and um, you would like most of was talking about there. They talked about how. Uh, people um, who are arrogant, they don't like to, what, taking advice, yeah, taking help, yeah, because what, they think they're superior, mm -hmm. yeah, so this is the, uh, um, this is one of the consequences of being arrogant, yeah, another example of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he tells us to do, is to what, better our everyday life, is to better us, yeah, so we, um, um, so we can have a better, uh, have a better life, yeah. So uh, they he don't he wouldn't take advice. People who are arrogant don't take advice. What was an, another thing? Um, like um, like uh, um, what is the cure f to like prevent us from being arrogant? Yeah, um, and just before that, he talked about how how being arrogant can prevent us to what going to paradise. This is how much Allah Subhanahu wa Taala dislikes it. Yeah. Um, and talking about the cures of how to um, humble ourselves and how to not be, uh, prevent being arrogant yeah and mostly talked about a couple of ways there can we just uh, go through them a little bit briefly so Misma what was the first thing that you talked about um, now we should realize that many things of that we are part of will not last forever yeah so the things that we have now yeah whether we think we are a superior f um, through our knowledge for, um, from, uh, from other people and how we wouldn't take advice of other people just because we think that we're better in some in some way yeah these things that you have now whether you have whether you have money whether you have um whatever you have this power yeah you can't take that with you after you pass away you can't take that with you so this is one way of when we think about it you really humble yourself what was another thing um that um that to realize that we are in, we ourselves are in, insignificant. Yeah. On the scale of everything, everything, we are what? What are we? Yeah. We're hardly nothing um, uh, uh, when you think about it in this in this universe. How massive it is. Yeah. And how how that whole universe is so small. In what in comparison? Yeah. And how insignificant that universe is, not maybe in size, yeah, because what Allah doesn't occupy any space, but in um, 
how insignificant that universe is compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creator yeah so how small how how much of value do we, uh, we really have yeah that we think that we are above everyone here yeah and we have this arrogance yeah and so these are just some uh, some ways to humble ourselves and we need to understand that arrogance is not a good thing to have yeah because it makes us lose our f- uh, family relations it makes us lose our friends it makes us um it makes us less fortunate in life because we don't like to take advice and we don't like to help people we don't like other people to help us yeah so miss but you've got the last thing so can we start uh, miss wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad we should be humble in everything we do as allah says in the quran the servants of allah are those who walk with humility humility on the earth and when the ignorant address them they say peace the Kabur enters our hearts very secretly. It tries to hide from us and take our thoughts over quietly. That is why Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has told us, Pride enters the heart like a black ant crawling over a black rock at night. The first thing that you should do when you achieve something good is to thank Allah. Just by saying Alhamdulillah, you will stop your nerves from praising yourself. By thanking Allah, we are including Him in all, our, in all aspects of our lives and sharing our joy and happiness with Him and recognizing Him recognizing that he is that through his bounty we that we have achieved success when allah created prophet adam he told all the creatures to bow down before adam iblis refused saying that i am better than him this is the first takab or the first pride and it was because of this that iblis is called shaitan one who is removed from allah's pleasure the quran says he he refused and he was and he was proud and he was one of the disbelievers from this we learn that pride is one of the traits of the disbelievers we all achieve something good in our lives. It doesn't mean that we should not be happy. We should be happy, we should feel glad, we should laugh and enjoy, but we should try to be as humble and modest as possible. We should also remember that it was Allah who helped us, and so we should thank Him. Let us conclude with a saying from Prophet Isa Islam. Just as a plant grows in soft ground, not where it is rocky and hard, so also wisdom grows in a heart which is humble and soft, not in a heart which is hard and proud. Don't you see that? The man who keeps his head high bashes it against the roof, while one who holds his head low has the roof as his friend and shelter. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil for you. Thank you, Mr. So, um, Mr. really ended there, ended talking about arrogance in a really important way. Yeah, and we just need to remember that under this, under this, um, a week remembering the Holy Prophet's birthday that we all to get, come together in unity yeah and come under the banner of the Holy Prophet's teachings yeah and because together what we are stronger and when we are arrogant yeah when you think oh you're um, you're a better Muslim than someone else yeah or oh, our teachings um, are right your teachings are, um, are wrong we can have these what we can have these beliefs yeah we can talk about these beliefs yeah but when we are arrogant yeah this changes yeah and this causes a big problem and this not this help um this prevents us for how from helping other people and taking advice from other people and helping other people help us as well yeah so let's think about the Prophet's teachings and come under the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yeah, hopefully you learn a lot on today's show Hopefully the people at home as well learn a lot on today's show as well And we'll see you next week, same time, same place on Hadai TV But until then, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh